Hey there everyone, Courtney here from How to Loom Your Dragon. I know it's been a while since I've posted a tutorial video up. I apologize, I've been very busy and my focus have, has been on many other things besides Rainbow Loom. However, I uh, a while ago I ordered the bands to make Fearnin, and uh, I'm finally getting to it now. <laughs> so this is the tutorial for Fearnin from The Inheritance. Um, cycle. It's a book series by Christopher Paolini. Um, as you can see, the title is backwards on screen because everything I do is mirrored um, on the screen. <laughs> so that's why I have a book that's backwards, in case you were wondering. Um, so Fjernan is a green dragon. He's going to be a little smaller than Saphira because that is how he is described in the book. Um, I did my best to match um, the description as best I could. So if you want to see the finished dragon, just go to the end of the last um, video and you will see him there. Alright, so before uh, we begin, just a few things of what you'll need. The band count is in the description. Keep in mind you can always use different colors than what I use. Um, you will need two looms, okay? Um, if you do not have the base extension, the extension bases, um, that's all right. I'm going to show you how to set up your double loom with just the regular bases. Okay, so this is part one. We are going to start by doing half of one of his wings. So I have already completed one of the wings. Okay, um, and this guy's wing is different from Saphir's in the fact that I am trying to extend the wing membrane from the front leg to the back leg um, to make it more realistic and anatomically correct. Uh, so that's why that is like that, but it'll it'll be cool in the end. Um, also, his uh, he has one fewer claw on his wing than Saphira does. So if you want to match Saphira's wing, you can go ahead and follow her wing tutorial for him. Um, however, if you want to just follow along with this one, that's fine too. Um, all right, so we are going to start in this video. We are going to make the top half, okay? Um, and in the following video, we will make the bottom half. Okay, so the colors that I will be using for this portion, okay, I'm using the Persian green apple. It's like a light green with kind of like a gold outer coating, which is good because in the description he kind of is very shimmery. Uh, also, I'm using the peridot Persian, Persian peridot, which is a darker green with a gold outer layer. Um, I am using the neon green and the lime green here and there, bits and pieces of him, okay? And for the white claws, I'm actually doing one of the solar bands, it is the Jupiter Solar. So these are white bands that change yellow in the sun, which I thought was pretty clever to do since on the book cover it kind of looks like his claws and teeth are a little bit yellow. So it, um, instead of using yellow bands, I'm gonna use white that can actually change yellow in the sun. Okay. Um, there are a few other colors you will need, just check the description, but for this portion of the video, that is what we will be using, okay? Also, you may want to get a bunch of old stretched out bands to use as tying bands. I keep them in a little container here so that I don't waste um, new bands on tying bands. <laughs> so I have old stretched out bands here that I reuse to tie the ends. All right, that being said, uh, let's begin here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to make is this claw at the end, okay? Now keep in mind I'm only going to be making one wing with you, so at the end of the wing part you're going to have to go back and make a second one. Um, that is also going to be what is going to happen with the legs as well, legs and feet. So I'm only going to be making one of each and having you go back and repeat. Okay, just keep in mind that you're going to need to know how to um, create your second one in, in a mirror image of the first. Okay, that way they bend opposite directions, that way the legs, the muscles will be on the correct sides. So when you're making your second one, just flip everything the other direction so that it's symmetrical to the first one that you make, if that makes any sense. If you've been following my videos, you know exactly what I mean. If you don't know what I mean, just hold your screen up in front of a mirror and uh, that will explain it. Okay. So here we go, we're gonna make that claw. All right. 
So um, for this part, we only need a single loom just for this cloth. Um, the rest of the wing, we're going to need two looms. All right, so I'm going to start with my peridot, so the shiny dark green. And I'm taking two bands at a time. And I'm going to go for my Persian apple. So this is the light green that is shiny. Okay, now every once in a while in the wing membrane, I'm going to be swapping the apple green for either the neon or the lime green, okay? So about every five or six sets, I kind of just do a random swap. So instead of maybe doing the apple green here, I'm going to do like, let's say the neon. I believe this is the neon, the really light one. Right, so just randomly there. You could also do the apple green there if you do not wish to intersperse it with the other ones. Okay, and here I'm going to take three. So three of the dark shiny green. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm going to do some horizontals here, so I'm going to take the dark peridot and I'm going to double loop it. Okay, so between those two is a double looped dark green as well there. And here. And there. Let me just double check this and make sure it's correct. Yeah, okay, good. All right. I'm going to take the green apple, double loop that, across those two, and across these two. Okay, so now I'm going to make the claw at the end, and I'm going to do that on my hook. So I'm going to take the solar Jupiter, I'm going to take one of those, and I'm going to wrap it around my hook to create five loops on the hook. Okay, and I'm going to double loop one. Usually I just double loop it on the hook and kind of like pull it like that. So it's a double looped band. And we pull that cap band onto it. Okay, then we grab the loops of the other end onto the hook. All right, we're gonna add another double looped. So double loop it on that hook and pull that first part onto it and reclaim the loops. And now I'm gonna take three, three of the solar bands and pull those on. So I did not double loop those, those are just three regular bands. And I'm gonna do three more. Just like that. Okay, so that is going to be the claw that we are going to wrap around this peg at the end. So I'm gonna wrap all six loops around that peg. Just like that. All right, now we're gonna loop it up. So if you're not that familiar with rainbow looming, you always wanna grab the top loops in each peg and loop those first, otherwise you'll get a tangled mess. So first I looped the green apple and now I'm looping the peridot. As you loop up, you wanna go behind and under that horizontal band and just grab the vertical bands. So I'm just going to continue, go up here. Okay, same thing here. I'm going underneath the horizontal band, grabbing the two top green apples and looping those. If you do it correctly, it should look like a teardrop, okay, without, without being a tangled mess right in here. There we go. So see how neat and clean that is because I looped the top bands first. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take two more of the green apple. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to flip my loom because it makes it easier for me. 
I'm going to go into this peg, so the second one here, and I'm going to pull both of them through and grab the loops on the other end like that on my hook. Okay, so essentially I'm putting just a little extra set here, and then I'm just going to grab one of my tying bands and I'm going to tie a slip knot there to hold it in place, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to tie off all these three ends at the top. So it doesn't matter what color you use of tying bands. I mean, some people like to keep it all the same color um, to make it easier, um, but you don't have to. So just random colors of stretched out bands that I use here. <laughs> All right, and now from the bottom, I'm gonna just gently use my hook to lift it up. It's, it's best to do it this way. It takes a little longer than pulling it down from the top, but it keeps it from being as stretched out in the end. Okay. All right, so there we have the very tip is complete. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna work on this first section here. So, here we go. Um, you need a double loom now. So this is how I generally connect my double looms if I do not have the base extensions. So just take a look at that, and if you want to essentially copy what I have on the back, make sure they're connected, feel free to do that. Okay. All right, so this is what I've done here, okay. I didn't put on the horizontal bands yet because I want you to see what I did. So on this edge, it's just two of the peridot at a time going all the way down. This one is the green apple, two at a time, and once in a while, like I said, I intersperse it with either the lime or neon green, okay, to get like kind of mottled leaf look like it's described in the book. Same thing with the third row, or third column rather. I call rows columns, whatever. Fourth one, same thing, okay. Fifth one, I went down up to here, and then I did the sixth row, and then I did this one and that one, okay. So those were all two bands at a time. It's very important that you get that order right though, okay. So first you do these, then you do this one, this one, and then these diagonals, okay. So this one first, then that one, two at a time. All right, here we go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, um, let's connect the, the claw first, okay? So how I'm going to do this, and this is optional um, for you, if you want to be adding horizontal bands here so that you don't miss a row of horizontal bands, you're going to follow me. If not, you can just connect the loops to the pegs and not worry about lifting them back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the loops that are tied off and I'm going to pull off that tying band. Wrap that around this peg. And we're going to do the same with the next set. You want to be very careful though because you don't want these loops to come undone because they can unravel and be very annoying. <laughs> so we are attaching. So if I, I've attached the four sets, okay? The dark row is attached with the dark row here, so make sure that you didn't flip it the wrong way. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to lift up the top two loops that I just connected around this peg and the top two loops from this one, and I'm going to add my horizontal here. So I'm going to take that peridot and double loop it and put it across here. I'm going to re-attach those, okay? Now I'm going to lift up these two top loops, these two, and these two again. And I'm going to take two of the green apple and stretch them across those three and then replace those loops back over them. Just like so, All right? Okay, now we're going to do the rest of our horizontals. So I'm going to double loop the peridot, and I'm going to do it all up 
just this first one. So I'm just taking one band at a time, double looping it, and putting it across those two pegs. So now I'm going to take two of the green apple at a time, so two, I'm not double looping now. I'm stretching it across every three. Those three, those three. Okay, you might get a little nervous if your loom starts to bend up. Just once in a while you might want to just gently press. Don't. Don't press too quick though, because sometimes it'll pop apart if you're too quick. I've learned I learned that when I made the uh, when I made Diamond and Diva. Yeah, the whole snout like came undone, and it was a big pain. Not only that, but I ended up having to redo the snout even after that again because it was too big. But hey, it's a it's a learning process. So I highly recommend if you don't have the base extensions to get them because it really keeps this nerve wracking to a minimum <laughs> because it holds the looms a lot better, or holds the rows a lot better. I'm not going to double loop between these two. I found out it's really not worth it to waste a band in between um, this part. Honestly, just save that band. You don't need to do it there. Okay, so now I'm going to push down the bands on this column because I need to put on my horizontal, or I'm sorry, my, um, these are going to be horizontal bands in the second video to attach the first part of the wing to the second. So now I'm just taking two of the green apple at a time and just resting them on these edge pegs here. Okay, let me think here and here. Okay, we're not gonna put any here. Okay, we're not gonna put a set there. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna start looping and I'm gonna actually loop this first just to get this out of the way and so that these bands don't fall off because it's a pain when they fall off. All right, so I'm going in here. I'm going underneath the bands that I um, attached from the loops and grabbing the two diagonals and I'm looping those. Now I'm gonna grab the next diagonal. So those two top ones loop those, and I'm going to go up this whole column. So you're just going to loop as if these loose bands aren't there. Okay, but you're just going to take your time and go slow and careful because we don't want them to get like tangled up in this. We want them to stay nice and, and uh, loose. So now that's secured, and now I can go up the rest of my columns.
All right, here we're going to lift and go underneath. Sure you grab both stands. All right, so at this point we can tie off these loose ends up here with some tying bands. See, when you have like 20 looms, you can do this whole wing in like one shot instead of like 10 parts. <laughs> That's very nice. The only annoying thing about that is like constantly like like figuring out how to connect the whole thing together. It can be quite a puzzle. All right, again, I'm going to lift up from the bottom. And it is best to use your hook just so you don't stretch anything out. It does take like twice, three times as long. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go this final um, diagonal set right before it becomes vertical. We're going to go through all those four loops plus those two horizontals. Okay, So I'm just going through that set, that last diagonal set, that whole set. And I'm just going to take um, two more of the apple green and pull them through. Okay, reclaim the loop and then we're going to just tie off right there. Okay, so I just re added a random set that kind of sticks out there that will be used when we do part two of the tutorial as the diagonals that will attach to the next row. Alright, so this is what it should look like. Okay. Alright, so on to the next part. Alright, so now I have already put all my bands on the loom here. Um, based on the first part, you should understand basically what I did here. Oh wait, no, this is the wrong one. It's all right, that's the last one. That one's a little different. This is the next one. Of course, these like to fall off. Okay, so all this is, and this red band here is just to remind myself to add the claw here. So don't worry about actually putting a red band around there. That's just a reminder for me. Okay, so um, pretty much the same thing here almost. So just dark green bands all the way down. Then your membrane bands, so your green apple interspersed with the other two greens down the rest of the rows. Okay, so all the way down. And then we just do the regular um, horizontals that we did in the first one. So one double looped peridot between these pegs and then two at a time of the green apple in between 
these three and these three, and then we do the two um, uh, extra bands hanging off the pegs at the end. Okay, so that's all that is. All right, what I'm going to do here before I forget is I'm going to attach a claw here. All right, so that is going to be this wing claw right here. So I'm going to take my white, and I'm going to make the same, pretty much the same type of claw that I made for the tip of the wing. Right? Or almost the same, a little bit, a um, little bit different. So okay, we're going to wrap a band around, creating five hoops. Right, I'm going to double loop the band, pull it on, reclaim the loops. We're going to do that again, double looped. Something, and one more double looped. Again, you can always make this claw longer or shorter, whatever you want to do. It's totally up to you. All right, now I'm going to take three and three more. So again, this is the solar bands. These are the solar bands, not just white. But you can always do white if you want. I don't care. All right, next we're going to do three of the peridot. So three of those dark green, pull those on. Then we're going to double loop the peridot. And we're going to double loop again. And I believe that is it. Let me just check. Okay, so now this claw, uh, I'm going to take this off, and I'm going to attach this claw right around that peg. Okay, so that will be our wing claw. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach all these loose ends to here. Okay, again, if you don't want to add the horizontal bands in here, you can just wrap them around. If you are going to add the horizontal bands like I am, you're going to take each set off as you wrap it around. So here I go, I'm going to lift off these two top loops, take your double looped peridot across the first two, and then put them back on. All right, now we're going to lift off these two, these two, and these two, and we're going to do our two green apple across those three. up these two, these two, and these two. Now this is a little tricky because you have these two loose bands that are kind of going to feel like they're in the way. Take your two green apple, put them across there, and then we're going to take two of those apple green and lay them right here. Okay. If you decide not to add these horizontal bands, um, you don't necessarily have to worry about putting these two on. Though, personally, I would, actually. So on this set here, just take off that tying band um, and lift up the top two loops and put these two here. Actually, no. Mm, you don't have to. It's not really going to make that big of a difference um, if you don't put them there. Yeah, you know, if you don't put them there, I'll try to remember to explain what to do at that point on part two. But honestly, it's really not a big deal to worry about. Yes, I will do my best to explain that at that point. Okay, there we go. So now all I'm doing now is I'm just looping up everything and I'm going to take it off again. Sorry, I like, I like to change my mind about things.
Yeah, you don't actually have to put that um, those loops on there. I'll, I'll definitely explain that in part two on what to do when we attach the second part to the first. You'll ju you're just going to skip that part. Do this end row next, just to get these, uh, so that these don't fall off and annoy me. By the way, um, if you um, don't follow me on Instagram and you're wondering what I'm doing with my life, you should follow me on Instagram. Because I don't really, if I don't post videos a lot, um, you can always follow me there and you'll see what I've been doing. I've been working on a bunch of other things like um, crocheting, um, drawing, painting. And I even do do I do do rainbow loom um, um, creations that I just sell without doing tutorials for. Like uh, I've been doing the baby wings of fire dragons. I've been doing some other things that I've been just kind of making on my own and selling them without doing a tutorial. Um, so if you ever want to check those out, just follow my Instagram. It's in the description. Anyway, all right. Time to tie these off. Right. Okay. The third part is the same thing we just did. Okay? Same thing, just without attaching a claw, so it's just gonna extend further. Alright. And again I interspersed some of the other two greens in with the apple green. Alright, so here we go. We're gonna attach our ends.
Okay. All right. So here we go again. I'm going to attach here the double looped Ferdo horizontal. So I'm just doing the same thing I did before on the last part. Same thing. Again, if you are not putting horizontals on this row, do not worry about putting those two bands there. Just leave them off. It's okay. All right, here we go. Let's loop up this row first. Get these out of the way. Hear those voices, those are my neighbors. I live in a duplex, so the people next to us, there's like two high school, college age kids living there. Um, and since I'm filming in the attic, I think they use their attic as like a video game room or something. So sometimes they get pretty passionate about their video games. So um, hopefully, you won't hear any vulgar language. <laughs> but, um, that is not my doing, so I apologize if you do. <laughs> seem to be nice kids, but um, I don't think they realize that I can hear right through their walls. <laughs> anyway. It's kind of funny, actually, because um, sometimes when I'm up here, like, designing or just doing art, I'll play, like, random videos on YouTube. Um, like Judge Judy or something, and then she'll be like yelling. Um, and I wonder if they like, if they're upstairs next door, if they like hear Judge Judy coming from my side of the house <laughs> or whatever I'm watching. Oh my goodness, you probably think I'm nuts. You probably think I'm talking to myself right now. Oh my gosh, You're probably like, wow, our, our neighbor's nuts, just like talking to herself in the attic. <laughs>
Okay, we have one more section um, for this half of the wing. So we're going to add one more section here, extend it a little further. And this one is almost the same as what we just did. It's a little different, and I'll explain. Um, so if you look at the finished wing here, you see how the arm of the wing um, kind of gets a little thicker at the end. So that is the one difference here, and I'll explain that. So we start by doing the two peridot at a time all the way down to this peg, okay? And then we do this row also peridot, also dark, to here, and then two diagonals going here, and then we complete with these two rows. So here, then here, diagonal, then these two sets. All right, then you do the peridot, two there, two there, two there, okay? And then the rest are the membrane colors, so the, um, I'm sorry, these are the green apple. So the green apple interspersed with the other two, pretty much, okay? All right. Same concept. All right, so just um, watch how I'm going to do this, okay? There's a certain order we need to do here, okay? So first I'm going to do these three sets right next to the dark green. So one, two, three. Okay, we're going to stop there. And now we're going to go this one, this one, and now we got to dig under, get the top two to here. All right, so now we can loop all the way up this column. the annoying row now. Annoying column. Okay, one of the 
those got twisted. I have to go back. If you think they got twisted, you're going to want to fix them. Don't take any risks. Because it's a pain in the butt when you have, like, one of those sets messed up when you're trying to attach it to, this, to the next part. It's like, ugh. Like, and then there's this little flaw in the wing that you just drives you nuts. <laughs> At least for me. As I am a perfectionist. Yeah, there you go, you hear that? <laughs> I think he has like those headphones on. Um, and then when he gets annoyed or passionate about what he's playing, he just, you know, just randomly hear voices. Anyway. I was hoping I'd be filming when they weren't home, but I don't know. So what we can do now is just tug all those loose bands out toward the edge as best you can. Okay, and we are ready to go on to part two. Just take a little mental break if you need to, get some food, go to the bathroom, which is what I'm going to do, and then join me for part two and we will finish this wing. Okay, I will see you guys over at part two.